Joined, as always, on a Friday by Gold, from the, actually from the Gold Coast, not from Sydney tonight, 2GB radio host, the voice of the people, here on Cridler, Mr Luke Grant. <laughs> now, you're, you're Hello, beach Peter. size, mate. You. How lucky are you? Oh, how lucky are you? How I lucky, love, I love how lucky am I? I know. It's a fantastic place to be. Could I just say quickly, well done you. That Anzac Day March cancellation in Melbourne was absolutely ridiculous. Good on you for the coverage this week. It's been terrific. And if there's been a breakthrough, oh, thanks, whether mate. it be your work or someone else's, that is just common sense. Well done. I think Victorians are finding their voice, I have to say. I think, uh, I think they're you're right. beaten yeah. by their Premier and I think they're not going to take yeah. it. I think that's in part today, even with these two yeah. cases. I don't think he dared to knock back the restriction easing that he promised yesterday. And as I said, I had a particular yeah. war widow one last night and uh, she didn't mince her words. Right, she didn't mince her she words. Didn't. So let's hope that's... You know what, she that is last, the reason it's all changed. For my listeners, the last lockdown was, for many, the breaking point, Peter. I think, it, I, think, I think you're right. I think that's true. I think we crossed mm. a line there. Um, I want to go to yeah. this issue of nuclear power because I, I feel <laughs> yes. that it's shifted. Um, it's shifted because this whole debate of emissions power and, and not just removing coal from our energy mix, but now the debate with the Greens to remove gas and some in Labor want gas to go. So if we're going to be serious, mm. we're going to make things still in this country, we're going to have manufacturing jobs, people understand we need base load power and and what you can see in that view and one, one person there doesn't want it others want more information but they are engaged right that i i can't yes. understand why the politicians don't take the public into their confidence and allow us to yeah. have a debate i mean we'd have a debate about same-sex marriage but somehow we're yes. not allowed to have a debate about nuclear power <laughs> what are you hearing uh, on talkback luke well now coincidentally last weekend I had uh, a guest who was part of the Australia for Nuclear Climate Group. Now, they're not a bunch of greenies. They're serious about advocating for nuclear as a real option. And uh, the point has to be made that it's essentially a protection racket. You can't even talk about nuclear. And then you get the mother of all scare campaigns thrown at anything you say. And, and people often, Peter, refer back to uh, Fukushima in Japan, thinking, oh, look, all those people died. That was the tsunami. 19,000 souls lost their lives, and we shouldn't forget that. But from the nuclear accident, there wasn't, from what I've been able to research over the last day, and according to this group last week, not one death uh, due to uh, nuclear wastage, nuclear leaks. Mm. So people just have to be told the truth. But we haven't been able to have the conversation, as you know. Uh, any politician who puts this forward up until just recently gets uh, shouted down, of course, then his or her seat's going to be home for this uh, massive nuclear plant. But it's, we've moved on. Those plants that existed at have... Fukushima and elsewhere, they aren't the same now. They're modular plants. They're, they're built by GE in America. They take seven or eight years to commission. They're doing one right now in Canada that'll be operating in 27 or 28 years, uh, in, in seven or eight years. And it's enough to power a suburb or two. You're not going to build one so big that it powers a whole country. But we need an informed debate, mm. Peter. We don't need to revisit history based on a, you know, a, a Netflix program like Chernobyl or something. Th things have changed. And there are countries, as you know, like France, Canada, all around the world that are relying on clean. And if the point is zero emissions, hello, and we've got all this uranium here which would have to be enriched, it's just a no-brainer. We've got to have the debate. We've got to have the debate, and I think Australians are hungry for these sorts of mature uh, debates we about are. where the country is at the next decade. Uh, of course, you need three things for nuclear power. You, you need geologically stable land. That's what you don't have in Japan. We have it here, and that's the point about yes. you know, very low seismic activity. You need plenty of space. Yeah. Well, we've got plenty of that. Uh, and you need water. Now, you can scale up in yeah. a, a, you know, a local or domestic nuclear capability scientists and things like that. People say that would take many, many years. We did it with Lucas Heights. We did it in, in a number of years, yeah. under 10 yeah. years, and we built a facility. Yeah. It's not beyond us, right? It's not beyond no. us. And I think this is, where, no. this is where people are crying out for a bit of leadership. Australians and are crying out for leadership. And these modular plants... You're right, you're right. These modular plants, mm. they call themselves for a week. So in the event mm. of something going awry, they've got a week to go in there and do something. So it's very different right. to, oh, my God. We're, we're you know, having quite a... It's different. 
We're having quite a lot of debate still on uh, renewable energy. We saw circumstances uh, in Texas, a bit of a, yeah. uh, a couple of weeks of chaos over there. Infrastructure Australia yeah. out there today saying there has to be a massive expansion of renewable energy in this country. Now, we're world leaders on renewable energy. I am not mm. convinced we need more of it. We need more baseload, not so much renewable. And it all comes at a time, the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, this is the, the Bob Brown Green Bank, I call it. It was part of the deal with Gillard to stay in power. Yes. Let's put $160 yeah. million of our money, handed it across to a French company to build one of the world's largest batteries, lithium-ion batteries near Geelong. Now, if renewables are so good, right, if they stack up, yeah. why on earth do they need only $200 million of our money to get them going? And at the same time as we're putting you know, $160 million into renewables, into a battery power for Geelong. Mm. Old mate over there in China, Xi Jinping, 227 new coal-fired power stations, building them at the yeah. same time as we're building a battery. Yeah. Goodness me, Luke. Uh, we're, we're a joke. I mean, we, we are a dead-set joke. Imagine that. Uh, if we wind this conversation back two minutes... So if we want to produce energy, we don't want to have emissions... And we want to be our habit there, even when there's no sun or wind. What are we going to do? One of the fascinating things, Peter, that I've, I've learned today is that when they look at new energy uh, investment, they don't take into account, you'll love this, the degree to which it's there all the time. So long as it can be produced at some point, it's open for investment. So the idea that, oh, hang on, what about at night when it might be dark and, and still? That doesn't, that's not a consideration. Mm. So no, no wonder there's not the investment in, again, nuclear, etc. because the parameters are ridiculous. And they've really got to look at that. Uh, I, I think the, uh, over all the years that we've spent money, and you're right, we lead the world in renewable investment, what have we got for it? Pick up your power bill and ask yourself the question, what have you got for it? My listeners are sick of it. They hear, oh, renewables, that'll fix things. We've heard that for too long. It hasn't fixed things. It costs too much to operate a home, a household, let alone a business and employ people. We're dead set a joke in this area. It's reliability and it's price incredibly important. And, of course, if we had Correct. nuclear power in this country, we'd, we'd get some nuclear subs, which I think are just as important yeah. from a strategic yeah. basis. I want to go to the, the mm. Facebook issue because I know you're at the coalface there on Radio 2GB. Yes. I know you rely on Facebook to get your messages out. I do. The government's had a, had a big win. Josh Frydenberg's had a big win. It's interesting that it's been sold as a big win here. Different views overseas. I think Facebook is talking its book <laughs> a bit. But I read something from yeah. Lord Rothermere. He's the owner of the Daily Mail in the UK. He's accused yes. the Morrison government of giving in to blackmail, he says, by Facebook. Um, yeah. He says yeah. they've rolled over. He wrote a letter in the UK Financial Times and he says a nation was held to ransom and it surrendered. Facebook has won the battle. It will decide what news is read on social media and how much, if anything, it pays for it. Now, <laughs> we don't know a lot of the detail in this Frydenberg-Zuckerberg no. deal. It's not out there yet. Yeah. But if Facebook can decide what publishers appear in the news feed, then if they can do that... To me, that's akin to censorship. And again, it gives Facebook the upper hand with any negotiation they have with media players. What do you know about the actual detail of this deal? Well, I'd like you, not very much, other than to say at least there's a deal. What a privileged position to be over there in the UK owning a newspaper and potting Josh Frydenberg et al. It's like waiting for the wounded to come home after the war and you'll give them a gobful. What a joke. At least we had a crack. Now, I want this bloke to look at The Guardian and see how many favourable mentions Craig Kelly gets. Because I'm here to tell you, editorial is what this space is all about. Uh, we know mm. it. Some newspapers have a slant one way, some the other. Some radio broadcasters, I'll put my hand up in the air every time I start the show and say, look, I'm a conservative. This is what you're going to get. Um, of course, people will choose what they do and don't publish. Mind you, if Facebook do something particularly nasty to government in order to force policy, that's a completely different matter. But I don't think we should. I think we've got a deal. Let's see what happens with the deal. No-one else in the world has got a deal. Little old Australia's no. got a deal. Go, Australia. 
let's see what happens. If things aren't right next year, then, you know, Josh will get uh, Mr Zuckerberg back around the table and hopefully get, get a new deal. But I think it's a bit rich for this bloke in England to be potting Josh Frydenberg and Scott Morrison. Give me a break. At least we did something. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see when we get the detail. We will. As always, Le Grant, thank you. Enjoy your time on the Goldie, and I'll see you next week. I'll have a little drink with an umbrella for you. Stop it. Come on, off you go. I've got another <laughs> good 45 minutes still here at the desk.